Well, hello, all you slump monkeys out there. It is I, the king of the slump monkeys. And uh, today I wanted to have a quick truck talk. Here goes my slump monkey logo. Can you see it? <laughs> uh, I wanted to have a quick little uh, truck talk about uh, what it means to be a CWI, a certified welding inspector, and how do you become a CWI? I get asked at least a hundred times a week, hey man, how do I become a CWI? Well, the answer is quite simple. To become a CWI, uh, you're going to have to take a three-part test from the American Welding Society called the QC1. And what that, uh, what that entails is basically a uh, part A, part B, and part C. Part A is your fundamentals. It's, uh, do you know how, do you know what the difference between a fillet weld and a flare bevel weld is? Do you know what the welding process is for gas metal arc welding versus uh, electro slag, um, versus laser beam, versus plasma, versus um, oxyacetylene welding, versus shielded metal arc, versus uh, flux core arc welding, versus submerged arc welding. I mean, there's a lot of types of welding. Uh, and that's the fundamentals, you know, do you know how to read welding symbols? Uh, do you know, uh, do you know the basic fundamentals of welding science and technology and metallurgy? Uh, what is the crystalline structure of steel? What happens when it anneals? What's the difference between annealing and quenching? Stuff like that. Real simple stuff. If you're, uh, if you've been in this for a while, uh, that shouldn't make you, um, that shouldn't, that shouldn't pucker the old booty hole. Um, the second part B is what most people consider the hardest part. And that is the hands-on. That is where they're going to give you uh, molds of welds. They're going to give you plastic molds and some tools, fillet gauges, VWAC gauge, um, a, a measuring tool, a, a Watson glass, a light. And you're basically going to inspect these welds based on a fake code. A fake code. You have to learn a fake code just for this test. And this fake code is going to tell you on a fillet weld that's 12 inches long, uh, you're allowed so many, <clears throat> so much porosity, so much um, undercut, so much overlap or none or what have you, um, undersize, oversize, uh, cap, you know, and you're literally going to have to measure this. By and, by and far, that was the hardest part of the test for me. I think I only got like a 92 or a 93 on it. Uh, it was hard. Um, I was scared. I mean, I shook my hands were like this when I was measuring out those welds. Uh, the fundamentals was quite, I thought it was fairly easy. Uh, but I do know a lot about, um, engineering and stuff. So it wasn't you know, terribly difficult. And then the part C is your, uh, code book test. Now you can take the, you can become a American welding society, QC one certified welding inspector with any code they offer. Uh, by far, the most popular is, is API, the American Petroleum Institute's 1104. Uh, it's a thinner code book. Most people, it's a little less intimidating. Um, they have, it, it has been added to. Uh, so there is a, a couple of annexes and addendums. Um, so, I mean, but some people do it with AWS D11. Some people do it with um, any of the other API or ASME codes. Um, so... It's really up to you. It's what what field are you going into? Uh, I had originally gotten into uh, petroleum. I wanted to be a pipeline inspector. Uh, however, uh, I then transitioned into structural steel, and it was a very easy transition because if you know how to read code, what can I say? It's just code. Should versus shall. If it shall be done, it means it dang well better get done. If it says it should be done, it's best practices says you need to do this, but the welding inspector can't nail you for it. Uh, so it's a three-part test. I'll tell you right now, I would not, not take the AWS prep course. Uh, I think with the AWS prep course, they have about a 40% pass rate. Um, with no prep course at all, it's about a 20% pass rate. So only about 20% of the people who uh, take that uh, QC1 actually pass it without any prep at all. With AWS, I want to say it's 40 to 50% pass it. Um, I would go through real education. Real education, and I, this isn't sponsored. I just like them. I just like the husband and wife team. They're amazing inspectors. They're amazing people. Uh, got a chance to really just get a chance to hang out with them. When I went to Pascagoula, Mississippi, uh, I ended up getting a chance to go to church with them and their, uh, 
I believe it was their son-in-law and daughter. Uh, amazing people, just a wonderful people. I just loved them to death. And I walked into that test so prepared. I mean, I aced that test. I think I think an overall score of like 91. Uh, got a 95 on the code, 92 or 93 on the uh, Part B, and I want to say, want to say about a 90, 88, 90, something like that on the um, on the fundamentals. Um, the CWI has to be renewed every three years, three count them, three years, and it's about 600 bucks, I think, to renew it every three years. Every nine years, you have to either retest uh, for a different code or you have to take 80 hours of CEs, what they call continuing education credit hours. Uh, this is what most guys uh, opt to do. Uh, I believe that it's the best way. And the reason is, is because American Welding Society wants you to be a good inspector. Just being a CWI alone is great. But if you can also uh, perform ultrasonic testing uh, for vertical, I mean, excuse me, I'm sorry, uh, horizontal and um and uh, at angle, so uh, ultrasonic one and two, um, longitudinal versus shear, I guess. Um, MT, PT is good, radiographic is good. Um, MT means mag particle, uh, PT means dipenetrant. Uh, RT, radiographic, obviously, UT, ultrasonic, uh, VT, visual testing. Uh, and then you've got eddy current and you've got um, phased array. There's a lot of different ways you can get those 80 CEs uh, that you're going to need every nine years. But every nine years, you are going to have to spend some money. Now, I work for one of the largest uh, engineering firms in the United States, and uh, they are very dedicated to uh, our education, honestly. They want us to be the very best inspectors possible. So they don't really have a problem with throwing money at us to go do it. If you're doing it on your own, I would encourage you, if you're a pipeline inspector, you're going to probably need to uh, get 1169 if you haven't already, API 1169, uh, because that's a certified pipe while, uh, pipeline inspector um, certification that API is now requiring. I think, I want to say they're requiring 80% of their applicants to have it, and it might even be 100% at this point. Uh, Mag particle and PT are also excellent. Uh, UT, though, is the bread and butter. If you are a structural steel inspector for a engineering firm, ultrasonic is the bread and butter. It is the it is guaranteed. If you're a CWI with ultrasonic one and two, and you are actually a, a, a ASTM, um, I say uh, ASN, ASNT qualified. So you went through their ASNT TC1A program through your engineering firm, and you have your credentials to be able to test. Uh, ultrasonic and uh, moment connections, uh, complete joint penetration welds. Um, that is the bread and butter. Uh, you're going to get that job. If you're just a CWI, you probably will. But if you're a CWI with UT1 and 2, the job is yours. The job is totally yours. Um, so that's just a little quick you know, uh, truck talk on how to become a welding inspector. Uh, if you want to go uh, check it out, realeducation. I think it's dot edu uh, education. It could be just go into Google and type in real education CWI, and uh, it'll pop up. It's the immediate. Um, <coughs> it's the immediate. Uh, it's the first one that'll pop up. They're a great organization. Uh, something that a lot of the cities are going to for um, structural. Specifically, or ICC, that's the International Code Council. I hate those guys. Um, ICC bolting is great. Don't get me wrong, that is wonderful. I think that if you need, if you are going to be a structural steel inspector, you better know what snug tightness versus uh, turn of the nut versus uh, pretension versus, uh, you know, A325TC for torsion control. Um, you need to know these things, and RCSC, the Research Council for Structural Connections, is an amazing publication that is the code for high-strength bolting. Um, but I have seen a lot of the cities are saying, oh, well, they need to either be a CWI or have ICC um, welding inspector. That's trash. That's absolute, utter garbage. There's no practical for the ICC. It's a code book test. So 
with that, you don't even have to have ever been a welder. You don't have to have ever had any experience in welding inspection or welding or inspection at all. Uh, for all intents and purposes, I could probably get my 19 year old daughter to take ICC uh, structural welding uh, for their uh, ICC welding inspector and she can be a welding inspector, a welding inspector. But it, being a CWI is more than just knowing the code. When you see undercut, when you see overlap, when you see porosity, uh, you need to be able to uh, talk to these guys and say, okay, here's the problem. When they're failing uh, a moment connection for ultrasonic testing, you need to be able to say, okay, I can show you where the flaw is, but I can tell you why the flaw is there, and it's your technique. It's uh, The fact is you're not cleaning between passes uh, for your complete joint penetration weld. You need to be able to be a consultant for the uh, erectors. So a CWI is by and far a much better certification than any of that trash ICC is offering, except for their high strength bolting. That high strength bolting is an amazingly good certification. Um, they also do, I think, concrete and stuff. But if you're honestly, if you're into concrete, ACI is the only way to fly. The American Concrete Institute is the paramount experts in concrete. You're also seeing in structural steel uh, something called a post-installed adhesive anchor. Uh, this basically is a um, either a uh, either just a, a, DB, a DBA a deformed bar anchor or um, like all thread or something that they're 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 drilling a hole in structural concrete and then they're cleaning it and then they're filling it with uh, maybe Hilti 500 V3 or something um, or Hilti 200 or uh, Dewalt 110 plus pure. Um, that they're, they're, they're putting epoxy in it and then they're installing the anchor, uh, so that they can, you know, transfer the, uh, the, the forces, uh, shear, tensile, whatever into the actual structure itself. Um, and they offer both the AAI, the adhesive anchor installer, and they also offer what's called the PICA. And that is the inspector portion for, um, the post installed adhesive anchor, um, it's a great certification. It's very worthwhile having, uh, especially as the, the industry transitions more and more toward uh, post, post installed. We're doing a lot of refabs. We're doing a lot of, uh, of, of, of renovations and stuff. So they're wanting to add, you know, canopies and stuff. Um, but if you want to be a welding inspector, these are a couple of the certifications you need to look at. A CWI is by and far the best certification. Uh, your ICC, by the way, any of you guys who have that ICC uh, certified uh, inspector or whatever for uh, welding, um, your certification is only good in a couple of municipalities. I think San Antonio is the only one that will accept it uh, in lieu of a CWI. Everywhere else on planet Earth requires a CWI. And that's the other cool thing about a CWI card is that you are a CWI on planet Earth and probably space. I don't know. Um, you you can inspect welds anywhere. It is a uh, it is a certification that is good anywhere on the planet. Uh, certain other countries, uh, specifically Canada, has their own certified welding inspector called the CSWIP, if I remember correctly. Uh, it's a great certification. I, I highly encourage um inspectors to get it, if, especially if you're going to be working pipeline up in Nova Scotia or Alberta or Calgary or anything like that. It's a great certification. And Canada's top notch. I mean, their, their welding inspector certifications are, are just as uh, rigorous as um, the CWI. So um, I hope this answered a couple of your questions. And uh, maybe this will be a good reference for people to look at and say, hey, I want to be a welding inspector. I can say, hey, man, check out Slump Monkey. I go through about a five minute, seven minute, 14 minute. I don't know how long this has been a uh, little talk on how to become a welding inspector and, and what's going to be required of you. Uh, so I hope you guys have a good day. If you haven't yet, hit like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. If you think what I said is full of crap, hey, man, let me know. I mean, I'm a I'm, I'm just a welding inspector. What can I say? Uh, also, I want to tell you one last little tidbit at the end. You are the most loathed, the most disliked individual on any project. As a welding inspector, you are going to be hated. Long story short, I always get my way. I never fight with uh, welders. I never fight with contractors. If you don't want to do it, if you don't think you have to do it, don't do it. 
I'm just going to put it in my report and call the structural engineer. And guess what? Unless he says it's okay, it's going to get done. I'm going to get my way. So, uh, because at the end of the day, we're not build, we're not building, um, we're not building titty bars for vampires. We're building schools. We're building, uh, warehouses. We're building, um, we're building, uh, office buildings. We're building, uh, residential, um, multifamily units. Um, this has to be done correctly because this is a life and limb kind of thing. Somebody could lose their life because you didn't do a good enough job. So, uh, I just want to encourage anybody who's interested. Um, hit me up in the comments. Tell me, uh, tell me where you are in your welding inspection journey or in your structural, uh, in your, in your, uh, structural inspection journey. And, um, that'll be, uh, that'll be, uh, uh, great to see your comments until next time. Catch you later. Bye.